Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and welcome back to Comics Explained, where I make you an expert on comic books in 30 minutes or less. And in this video, I'm gonna make you an expert on Sam Wilson, but only Sam Wilson as he was Captain America. Honestly, because at the moment, nobody really cares about Sam Wilson when he was Falcon. <laughs> I say that because in at the end of the episode six, which is coming out this week, it's actually Tuesday that I'm recording this, I'm assuming Sam Wilson's gonna become Captain America, and nobody cares about Sam Wilson when he's Falcon, right? Nobody's gonna be Googling Sam Wilson as Falcon. They're gonna be Googling Sam Wilson, Captain America. That's what they're looking for, and so so that's what we're gonna cover here. So one of the things to understand is that Sam Wilson becoming Captain America, as far as Rick Remender, the guy who did this, he thought it was just an inevitable result of what uh, basically needed to be something that changed. The reality of this is there was an interview he did with Entertainment Weekly, where he was asked why it was that he changed uh, Captain America from Steve Rogers to Sam Wilson. And he felt that it was necessary because for a long time, he was it was always Steve Rogers. And most Marvel superheroes, most mainstream superheroes in Marvel were white guys. And so what he wanted to do was turn Captain America into a minority character basically turned Sam Wilson into Captain America so people who were not white people could see themselves represented in comics and hold prominent positions. Now, as you might expect, this created a bunch of backlash. <laughs> and the backlash to Sam Wilson becoming Captain America really only ever came from three directions. The first is people who were just legitimately racist. The second is people, and this is probably one of the more interesting aspects, people who didn't agree with the idea of placing existing characters with minority characters. They considered it tokenism, and a lot of people kind of came across with that argument and saying, why not just give them their own series? and then focus on that, right? Build the character up in that way. Now, people who come from that perspective are people who usually don't read comics or didn't know anything about Sam Wilson because in 1983 and 1984, Marvel tried that with a limited series as a test bed to see whether or not a solo series could work. And it didn't. Nobody really bought the limited series. And so a solo series never came to fruition. More recently, Marvel tried that after Sam Wilson was Captain America when he went back to being Falcon and it still didn't do very well, right? I mean, it only ran for about eight issues and it was canceled due to low sales, despite the fact that the story was exceedingly good. And so the reality was, people don't care about Sam Wilson as Falcon when it's just Sam Wilson by himself, right? They care about Sam Wilson when he's either Captain America or playing alongside Captain America. The, the third aspect and the third direction people were coming from is that they simply just didn't want things to change, right? That things were a certain way. Steve Rogers was Captain America. It's what they were used to, and they just wanted it to stay that way. In terms of, you know, any kind of ratio or percentages, like whether, you know, it's like a 70 and 2010 split between like racists and then people who didn't want change versus people who were, you know, wanted Sam Wilson to have stories that were beefed up. I don't know. Like, I don't really know what that ratio was. And honestly, I don't really care what it is. The reality is that, that was just kind of the three directions with regards to a lot of the uh, a lot of the backlash that were coming from this. Now, as it was, the stories with Sam Wilson as Captain America were fantastic. At least I thought they were. And the way that Rick Remender did this is he immediately went into this idea of Sam Wilson being, de being viewed by America as a false Captain America, right? That they looked at that and they said, no, Steve Rogers is Captain America. We don't know who this guy is, but we're going to cast him off. The lead up to that was one of the best things to come out of Captain America story telling. What Rick Remender ended up doing was kicking all this off with a story called Castaway in Dimension Z. And this was basically a story where Steve Rogers was whisked away to a dimension that belonged to Arnim Zola. Now, ultimately, he was able to escape. But shortly after that, he ended up in a conflict with a guy by the name of the Iron Nail, who basically stripped Steve Rogers of his super soldier serum. And that resulted in Steve Rogers aging up and becoming an old man. And so in response to that, Steve Rogers ended up getting into a bit of a skirmish and then realized he didn't quite have the kind of wherewithal that he used to have, right? He couldn't fight in the same capacity that he did. And so this led to him giving Sam Wilson the shield because he and Sam Wilson had been had been you know partners for quite some time. And so the reality was it was the most natural transition. We did see Marvel try Bucky Barnes as Captain America, and it was cool for what it was. But ultimately, you know, Steve Rogers ended up coming back, and that was one of the big things that I think a lot of people who were upset about Sam Wilson being Captain America seemed to kind of overlook. And it's one of the reasons why it's really important to understand the nature of comics if you're going to start making arguments like that, because in comics nothing stays changed forever. In the end, everything basically ends up going back to the status quo. The only exception to that is that Uncle Ben's never been never been brought back in terms of being of truly returning in Marvel Comics. He's basically still dead. You've seen versions of him come back from the Spider-Man mythos, but Steve Rogers at one point was Nomad and then went back to being Captain America. We saw that Steve Rogers lost the Captain America mantle in the 80s due to the uh, Commission on Superhuman Activities, which led to John Walker becoming Captain America, and then Steve Rogers went back to being Captain America again. Steve Rogers died in the aftermath of Civil War, which led to Bucky Barnes becoming Captain America, and then Steve Rogers came back 
back and was Captain America again, right? So as long as you read comics for any real measure of time, one of the most important things you learn is that nothing stays changed forever and it's all, it all just circles back to the status quo, right? It's just the way those things always work. And so leading into or, or really kind of coming up on Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars event, just prior to that, you got a six issue series and it's really more of just a singular story arc and you could even call it a mini series if you wanted to that was called All New Captain America written by Rick Remender. And it was really Remender's chance to kind of craft Sam Wilson as Captain America in the way that he imagined him being before the events of Secret War started and the aftermath essentially picked up. And so one of the most important things to come out of Remender's run here was something that basically dealt with removing or changing the Snap Wilson concept. Now the way this worked is that originally Sam Wilson was a guy who had basically struggled with the death of his parents in you know by violent means. And he ultimately ended up volunteering and becoming a social worker but was tricked into traveling to an island called Exile by the Red Skull. Now supposedly the Red Skull had used a cosmic cube to give Sam Wilson the power to communicate with birds but the important thing here is that uh, Sam Wilson allied himself with Steve Rogers in order to stop the Red Skull and his henchmen which led to Sam Wilson becoming a sidekick to Steve Rogers or a partner to Steve Rogers. However in Captain America 186 there was a story written by Steve Englehart which basically revealed this idea that Sam Wilson's true persona the actual Sam Wilson was a guy named Snap Wilson who was essentially like a thug or, or some kind of a henchman who was actually getting into drug running but when he was brought over to the island of exile that uh, the Red Skull had used a cosmic cube to change the past of, of Snap Wilson and to basically give him the name Sam Wilson and then to give him the story of being like a charitable volunteer worker so that Sam Wilson could basically partner with Captain America and then essentially betray Captain America at Red Skull's wishes somewhere along the line after gathering a whole bunch of information that could be used against Steve Rogers. Uh, the problem with this was that Steve Englehart left the Captain America series before he could actually explain why this was done. Now J.M.D. Mateus did try to fix this in Captain America 276 through 278 uh, but ultimately no real work was done it just kind of stayed there and so for a long long time there was this kind of belief among comic book fans and even a little bit of vitriol from minority comic book fans that Marvel had in effect changed the history of Sam Wilson in order to make him a black stereotype as opposed to a guy who was a charitable volunteer and, and social worker who eventually became Captain America's sidekick. But the idea of Rick Remender was to go back and basically just completely and totally change that. And so what he did is he kind of reversed things. And so he effectively told the story or, or kind of had this revelation by way of the Red Skull's daughter that Sam Wilson is actually Sam Wilson. He really is a charitable volunteer worker and, and social worker. The Red Skull using the Cosmic Cube to manipulate his past, that was done for the purpose of creating Snap Wilson. And so in effect, the Red Skull created a black stereotype for Sam Wilson, and then was ultimately just kind of cast aside and removed. It was about the best you could do outside of just rebooting the character in its entirety. Uh, but that's really the, the, the big significant moment there. The kind of underlying themes in terms of what was going on with this character in a lot of ways just dealt with Sam Wilson facing off against Hydra, which depending on who you talk to may or may not be a good thing. I thought it was okay, but Hydra was largely a Steve Rogers enemy, and I felt it would have been a little more appropriate to create a personal enemy or at least a personal uh, villainous group for Sam Wilson to face off against instead of just retreading the old enemies of Steve Rogers. But regardless of how you slice it, in the aftermath of Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars in 2015, you ended up getting Nick Spencer who took over the Captain America line of stories. And to say that Nick Spencer's run was divisive is an understatement. I personally loved it. I thought Nick Spencer's run on Captain America was better than Ed Brubaker's run. It's probably the single greatest Captain America run that I'd ever read. Uh, but there were a lot of people out there who felt otherwise in the most extreme, who look at Nick Spencer's Captain America run and see it as the worst run of all time. There were, of course, those, and you probably remember some highlights, people who were uh, really pissed off because Captain America became a Hydra agent. A lot of that was because people who didn't read comics and didn't actually know what was going on were mad because Captain America suddenly became a Hydra agent. If you read the story, then you basically got this realization that Captain America's past had been changed by the Red Skull using a cosmic cube, right? So that's how Captain America ended up becoming a Hydra agent. But the important thing here is that you basically had the whole run of Sam Wilson as Captain America uh, really kind of end in a way where he got his own he had his own uh, Captain America Sam Wilson solo series but basically walking away from the role of Captain America in its entirety. Now the reality is that this was a multi-staged kind of series of events that led to Sam Wilson leaving the mantle in the first place. The first of these really came by way of word reaching his ears due to some information that was essentially given to him by Rick Jones operating under the name of Whisperer that S.H.I.E.L.D. was in the process of recreating a cosmic cube which he just didn't really agree with. One because following the events of Civil War the idea of S.H.I.E.L.D. Of shield as far as Sam Wilson saw it under the leadership of Maria Hill had largely been tainted because Maria Hill was just so gung-ho about rounding up superheroes and forcing them to uh, to register under you know the under government supervision in terms of how they acted and conducted themselves. The other part of this is that Sam Wilson despite his respect for Steve Rogers largely saw Captain America as a hero who just didn't really have his ear to the ground. He wasn't really a champion
champion of the common man. He was just kind of a protector of the world. Now, it doesn't mean that Steve Rogers would just let an old lady get mugged on the street, but what it did mean is that as a member of the Avengers, and while he had his own stories, he was largely focused on the bigger picture. And so Sam Wilson, essentially between the information he learned about S.H.I.E.L.D. and his belief that Captain America needed to be rooted more in terms of, of operating on the ground level, walked away from the government in its entirety. And so following this, it went into what was probably the last straw for Sam Wilson. And it was really cool the way that it was done, right? So what you had here was Sam Wilson basically coming across Joaquin Torres, who ended up becoming his own Falcon, and then the events of Pleasant Hill, also known as Avengers Standoff. Now, the idea of Avengers Standoff and, and Pleasant Hill was basically this notion that S.H.I.E.L.D. had kind of rounded up all these different supervillains and then thrown them into a, a, a little town and then used a cosmic cube to more or less imprison them. Ultimately, Sam Wilson, alongside the Avengers, ended up freeing all these individuals, who, which also included Captain America, but the Red Skull ended up using the Cosmic Cube, who was kind of transformed into a little girl, to essentially rewrite Steve Rogers' past and make him a Hydra agent. And so with this going forward, you ended up seeing kind of Sam Wilson going about and, and doing his normal thing, all the while unaware that Steve Rogers, as a Hydra agent now, was kind of planning and, and plotting and scheming against the superhero community, and he ended up coming across a character by the name of Rage. Now, Rage was a guy who, who operated out of Brooklyn and actually ended up coming into conflict with what was called the AmeriCorps. Now, the AmeriCorps was a concept put forward by uh, Paul Keane and, uh, and Harry Hauser, and ultimately the idea here was to kind of have an autonomous police force that could uh, really accompany existing police and sort of enhance to a degree, but ultimately the AmeriCorps just ended up becoming individuals who were cracking down on minorities. And so this led to Sam Wilson uh, kind of going in and initially confronting Rage and then ultimately siding against the AmeriCorps. This led to Harry Hauser and Paul Keane bringing in U.S. agent John Walker in an effort to, to send him to grab uh, Sam Wilson and take the shield away, which led to Steve Rogers intervening when, Jim, when, uh, when John Walker said no, and Steve Rogers, with nobody knowing he was a Hydra agent, considered it a personal favor for John Walker to go and apprehend Sam Wilson. And so ultimately, with the two of them kind of getting into a bit of a skirmish, in the end, Sam Wilson was allowed to keep the shield and just kind of went forward from there. And so ultimately, with Rage kind of being busted, or at least, you know, being accused of robbing a bodega, uh, because of the fact that the entire situation seemed so exceedingly unfair, Sam Wilson just walked away. He just abandoned the role. Between the, the accusations of the American people that he was not fit to be Captain America because he wasn't Steve Rogers, the various racial issues he'd run into, and just seemingly this all around, kind of coming from every direction, hostile uh, position, he abandoned the role in its entirety. What this did is it allowed him to kind of be removed from the picture and set the stage for Secret Empire. Now, now the truth about Sam Wilson is that had he been active as Captain America during Secret Empire, it wouldn't have really made a difference, but Secret Empire was essentially the story whereby Captain America had executed his plan as a Hydra agent to conquer North America and then his intention to conquer the rest of the world. For Sam Wilson, he largely stayed off the radar until what you had was a group called the Underground. And the Underground was basically just the remains of the superhero community who just hadn't really been uh, been trapped in, in various places. And then you basically had, you know, everybody else who was trying to operate and, and you know, overcome the forces of Steve Rogers as best they could. Sam Wilson ended up coming out of retirement to a degree in order to help the Underground, but largely didn't, didn't take back or didn't restore himself to the Captain America mantle. But ultimately, when the Underground was attacked by the forces of Hydra and Sam Wilson really just kind of kind of witnessing the brutality of Hydra because, you know, he hadn't really seen it up to that point. He had kind of been out of the picture. He ultimately redawned the mantle of Captain America and then just kind of went forward from there, right? And, and used it as a means to try to inspire the American people. Now, again, Secret Empire was very much a political story. I loved it. And the political commentary in that was amazing. For example, I believe that, that Steve Rogers becoming a Hydra agent and the things that he did as a Hydra agent was basically giving the, the American people what they asked for because of a, a, a real huge amount of lack of action on behalf of the American people in terms of doing anything to stop it, right? So the apathy of the, the American people led to their circumstance. And so it was, it was a really, really cool story. It was great the way that it was told. And again, it's one of my absolute favorites. But ultimately, the events of Secret Empire came to an end and Steve Rogers was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Because on the front side, the way that it ended, you kind of had the memory of Steve Rogers, which was restored to the to his physical form. And so you had Hydra Steve or Steve, as some people called him. And then you had the real Steve or the, the proper Steve Rogers. Ultimately, the proper Steve Rogers won. But because of the fact that Hydra Captain America or Hydra Steve Rogers had betrayed the nation, earning the nation's trust back was exceedingly important. And Sam Wilson believed the best way to do that was to give him the Captain America shield back. And that's what he did. He relinquished the mantle of Captain America uh, and returned the shield to, uh, to Steve Rogers and then went back to becoming Falcon. So again, just one of those examples where everything that changes goes back to the status quo in comics. But ultimately, following that, uh, Sam Wilson got his own bit of a story and, and it was cool the way that it was done in Falcon Volume 2. It was a great series of stories. He ended up just kind of going back to focusing on street level issues, street level events, you know, dealing with things uh, across the country or really 
in Chicago that was basically small time stuff, but it allowed him to kind of maintain his role on being uh, a relatively kind of down to earth guy. You know, ultimately just in time for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, Marvel released their own solo series. Honestly, I haven't really read it yet. Um, I probably should. <laughs> uh, it, it came out in, in April of this year, or I'm sorry, in April of last year. So it's not too far. I mean, you know, last year was, well, it was last year. So, you know, trying to maintain my sanity was, was really just a chore in and of itself. Staying current on Marvel Comics, that was background. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but nonetheless, you know, Sam Wilson is, is Captain America. It was a really, really cool run, and it was a really cool concept. The reality is it started off with Rick Remender and then just kind of went through the entirety of Nick Spencer's run and then ultimately came to an end when ta Coates took over the, the Captain America series, which if you never read uh, ta Coates' Captain America, that one was really good too, right? There was a time there, I would say, with, with ta Coates' writing, there was a time there for about a year and a half when Captain America was the best thing that nobody was reading. The stories were just fantastic. I can cover them if you guys are interested, but uh, with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace. Thank you.